everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So, do you wanna win something for free? Stay tuned to this video and I will tell you how to do just that. We are going to be possibly giving away something to somebody. Now I say possibly because there's a challenge involved and I don't know for sure if it can be achieved. What am I talking about? What is a prize? Stay tuned to find out. But today we are looking at my massive Patsy Klein CD collection. This is actually a video that was requested some time back. Somebody said, why don't you show, you've showed your Patsy Klein records a lot. How about the CDs? I don't think we've ever showcased though. And if we have, it hasn't been in its own video. So I thought to myself, do I really have enough to make a video over? So I went looking through the archives again, back down into that Jack Benny vault to see and sure enough, I've amassed quite a few, some rarities, some interesting things. And if you have a fleeting interest in Patsy Cline music, you'll probably wanna stay tuned because having done this now, I can tell you what to avoid, what you should get, some of the rare things and how to get them, all that fun stuff. Anyway, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. <laughs> Okay, get yourself some popcorn because this is going to be a minute. But this is cool because I believe I have the world's largest collection of Patsy Cline on CD. The size of this collection is rivaled only by my Glenn Miller collection, which is probably equal, if not a little bit larger. Okay, so I've kind of got these categorized. We're going to start with like compilations, some unofficial stuff, and then we're going to end up with the Canon official MCA releases. This is a uh, Reader's Digest three disc set and I only have two of the three discs. This was given as a gift. A very good compilation because it's broken down by the eras of her career, like what phase of her career. Uh, definitely like that set as well. This is, um, I wouldn't go so far as to say unauthorized because I don't know of the licensing arrangement that these have, but uh, this would be one of the third party, we'll call it a third party release. And there's two phases, by the way, a lot of the third party releases don't have a booklet. They just have a single single sheet with a track listing and sometimes just blank on the back if it's really cheap. But Patsy Cline's music was divided into two categories. The first half of her career was music that was recorded under her agreement with Four Star Music and licensed to DECA, which later became MCA, um, and which later became UME. Uh, but anyway, so... A lot of the third party stuff uses the earlier recordings. So songs that were later in recording like Crazy and things like that that are more well known and associated with her oftentimes aren't on these third party uh, discs. But they're still fun to collect. These date back to the 80s, some of them the 90s, and then I'm going to go through some of the recent ones as well. Remembering Patsy Cline and Jim Reeves both unfortunately perished in plane crashes. There, This is a very interesting one. This is actually an official release, as you can see. Um, and we'll get into this, uh, into these uh, checklists a little bit later. But um, Jim Reeves was on RCA Patsy Cline on DECA. So they released two versions of not the same album, but the same idea, sort of pairing the two together. This is the MCA version, which has the red cover. Then there's a Jim Reeves, Patsy Cline compilation with, I think, a blue cover. It's very similar that was released uh, under license with RCA. I have, I think I have the other one on tape. And I do have a tape collection of Patsy Cline as well. It's just not as massive as this. Uh, this is an older CD, Patsy Cline, Birth of a Star. And uh, this one is actually really cool. This is one of two that I have by Razor Tie, Razor and Tie. And what's cool about this is even though it appears as though it's a third party release, it actually has some very, very, very unique stuff that you can't find on any of the official releases and things that are just more rare. So this was definitely one to pick up. If you ever see Razor and Tie for Patsy Cline, go for it. Absolutely go for it. This is another pretty rare one, and well, I don't know how rare it is, but it's kind of expensive to pick up. There's, I think, two discs of this. This is one of the of the two. Uh, this is a Rhino release. Rhino was huge in the 90s, 
But if you find one of these Rhino releases still in the long box, they can fetch a pretty penny. Most of this is not, well, I should say, none of it for me is for the value. It's literally just to listen to these and to have them. But I have seen these go for uh, a bit of money. These are early recordings, volume one. And like I said, there was another one. This is a third party disc, but it's one of my absolute favorites. It's essentially all of her uh, recordings off the air. Uh, on the airwaves as it says there's a lot packed into here and this is the only disc the only disc where you can hear her sing and it's actually from a youtube video you can hear the same exact distortion in the in the, in the youtube video and on this disc of, of a christmas song which i am struggling to find there it is let it snow track number 11 on disc two and again this is a really 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 cool album it is it says it, yeah it's a two disc set well, obviously, I just said disc two. And isn't it interesting how they can do this now? I remember back in the old days, a two disc set meant it was going to be a much thicker package. This is like a single jewel case. This one can be a little pricey. It is coming from the EU. So um, if you're a stateside, it'll take a while to get here, but it's a cool one to find. This is a really, really neat one. We were gifted from uh, Bear Family Records. And Bear Family Records releases some very unique things as well and what i love about this check out this disc this is bar none the coolest i will say the coolest cd cover art i have anywhere in the collection because it looks like an original silver and black deca label with the wrapper around it, it even has the official deca wrapper and again repeated on the back there Packaging is uh, no holds barred there for sure. This is a good collection. Some early stuff. I believe this has some recordings, uh, excuse me, some broadcast material on it. And um, definitely if you're, this is not like what you would go for if you were like a beginner Patsy Klein collector. But if you had been, you know, looking for some more deep cut stuff, that's definitely a necessity. This is a, one of the love compilations. This is True Love Standards Collection and um, this is an MCA issue, so it's official. Yeah, it's a typical 12, 13 songs. 11, 12. Oh, it's like 11, 13. Where's 12? That's over here. So yeah, that's a good one to get. This one is a more recent release. This is the Ultimate Collection, a two-disc set, and we've got Greatest Hits material on here, but oftentimes these... Uh, collections if they're even if they're compilations but they're official compilations like this is a ume so this is even after mca are going to have compilations of those later songs that we were talking about so the best of the best here's the 20th century masters disc there's two volumes to this i believe i only have the first volume some great uh photos in here as well not a huge track listing but it's a good beginner's program this would be a very good first cd for somebody just starting out back to the third party world we have this twin special or twin special tv no let me try that again twin pack tv special 28 golden hits by gusto tv and again these are going to be the old songs from the four star era of her career i do like the screen printed discs though i think that that's a, a neat touch here's another uh contemporary release this is icon I can't believe they went with that font. I mean, that's just something you can get today in Word. So it's an overused font. Again, not an impressive track listing, but it's a very good, you know, this this would be a very good first CD of the 10 or 12 greatest hits. This is a special one. This is one that you have to hunt a little bit for. But if you go to the Patsy Cline Museum's website, they have an exclusive album, sound quality and the remastering for this. Uh, which was uniquely done for this release by UME, is very, very good, actually. It's a great starting point. It's those familiar songs, Crazy, Leaving on Your Mind, Walking After Midnight. And by the way, if you're not aware, some of Patsy Cline's songs, she re-recorded. So when she signed directly with Decca, she went back and re-recorded stuff like Walking After Midnight. So there's two versions. There's sort of a modern and a non-modern more western themed version of some of her songs she did that with like two or three different songs this is one of the collections i cut my teeth on i listened to this streaming for a long 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 time and was glad to pick up the disc this is 
uh, a really good starting point as well. Uh, official MCA issue, the definitive collection. This would be in my top 10 beginners, Patsy Klein CDs. This one I got from Cracker Barrel. This is one of two discs that I got from Cracker Barrel. Hits and Hymns, combination of both. Very, very cool artwork. And a limited track listing, but an interesting collection. It's got Dear God. That's a pretty rare song to find on compilations. There's about 10 or 12 songs that don't make it onto the usual um, compilations. This is licensed through Gaither Music and Universal Music and available at Cracker Barrel. Also available at Cracker Barrel is this, Patsy Cline Favorites. This is going to be a Greatest Hits as well. You can see the Cracker Barrel logo. There was an older Cracker Barrel exclusive that they did as well, and I do not have that one. But this is a nice presentation. It's kind of cool to see the branding of Cracker Barrel on there. You guys still there? If you're if you're still there, I mean, I have to hand it to you. That's a pretty deep dive on, on one artist. This is another one of the love compilations. I love the red on white. And yes, sometimes I will buy these things just because I like the particular design of one. It's not like I needed those songs specifically. This is, here it is, another love uh, songs compilation. This one done up in a different way completely. I love when they do the clear background. Um, this one has some advertising on it. But a very nice presentation. Very, very nice. That's a 2002 release. All right, next up we have two volumes of a three-volume set. These were issued through Laser Light Digital. By the way, fun fact for my Glenn Miller fans out there, Laser Light's digital one and only gold record, I think even platinum, was the Glenn Miller... Uh, Christmas album that was recorded in the 90s. What was it? Christmas? Anyway, that is uh, what I believe to be the, the truth. I'd heard that somewhere that that was their one and only. So Laser Light Digital, for those of you who don't know, budget label. This and Madison were the two like super budget re-releases. Usually they were, the recordings were subpar, etc., etc. But you could get what seemed like a good deal, like box sets and things for dirt cheap. That being said, there are some um, good recordings on, on Laser Light. If you know kind of how Laser Light works, it, you can find some good stuff. These are good. These are the early stuff. Um, so if you're looking for early stuff, those are good. This is another European import I bought early on in my collecting because it had the three main albums released. Uh, or no, I shouldn't say the three main. These are the three albums released during her lifetime. 1957 self-titled debut showcase this featuring the original artwork and um sentimentally yours which was released right before her passing she had recorded enough music that there were several albums released uh after her passing this also includes a couple of her many eps and this is just a great place to start again i don't think this is a authorized release but it's an interesting collectible nonetheless sounds good to my ear and there's a lot, lot of music packed onto that collection. Here's another one. A lot of these are things I find at like thrift stores. This being one of them. And some of the early stuff. Early stuff on a early CD. Advertising other artists and things as well. And this is a curious release because unlike most of what we're looking at here, this was actually released on Sony. Sony had nothing to do with Patsy Cline. Uh, or RCA, which was rolled into Sony. But this was licensed by Sony and, again, hiding out. I wonder if this is uh, same track listing on that other album that ended in hiding out. I'll have to look at that. Sometimes they do that. Sometimes they essentially take the same track listing and re-release it and call it something new. Okay, this is a CD that I would say is up there in the top five recommended. This is on the air. This is essentially kind of what we looked at earlier, but these are official... Uh, releases this is premium sound quality on the air her greatest tv performances so specifically tv broadcast performances all right let me scoot this over here pick this up recently in tennessee it's essentially i think a third party release but it's cool because it has a dvd as well so some videos and the track listing on the cd portion are those early songs again but two disc set with a sleeve. And as you can see, I got a really good price on it. So that was an easy one for the collection. Here's my other Razor and Tie CD. 
live performances. If you ever see these razor and ties for Patsy Cline, pick them up and you'll find some unique versions. As you learn about Patsy Cline and get deeper into the history, you'll learn to appreciate certain recordings, certain phases and certain things. And you'll find it on there. Here's another compilation. This would be a budget compilation, an early one. This is an official album, 1985. It's a compilation album, but it was an official release. And as you can see, it says our, our MCA on there. Yeah. Next we have Rhythm and Country, Patsy Klein, Hot Hits and Sweet Sentiment from the Queen of Country. This is a Hallmark release. I love to collect as seen on TV and exclusives. Here is another version of that same love compilation, the one that had the white and red. This with a different, different disc. Okay, now we're gonna look at some albums, some official album releases. Portrait of Patsy Cline was one of the albums that was released after her passing. And I wanna use this as an example to show you this common design for these booklets that they did on these official album releases. They open top to bottom like that, which is really, really cool. This one has liner notes for this uh, release and the original album liner notes as well as a track listing. And we've got a chronological uh, chronology here. That's all chronologies are chronological. And this is the checklist of official releases. I have pretty much everything on this list now, but this has actually been very helpful to try and track down everything. And yeah, that is a good one. I also have this album on reel to reel tape. The next thing, if anybody wants to watch it, would be eventually doing a review of my tape collection. I've got eight tracks. I've got reel to reel tape, not plural, just one. And, you know, a few cassettes. Not as big by any means as this collection. All right. Uh, live, volume two, official MCA release of live recordings. Absolute great sound quality and a mandatory edition. Patsy Cline's story. This was the first album released after her passing and originally was designed to be an album of uh, just new material. But after her passing, they decided to release this as a dual album set featuring greatest hits and the new material. People don't realize that this is, is considered an album. So there's material released in here for the first time. This is contemporary artwork for the CD. I really like this design. Next up, we have um, a CD that looks like it's missing its liner notes. It's not, but the liner notes folded out into a poster that I have on my wall. So that's where the, the liner notes are. This is a recording that's very special. Um, this was, uh, so what happened was somebody found a copy of a seven inch tape reel that Patsy Klein was given after she performed at the Cimarron Ballroom in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it wasn't discovered until the 90s. So this was released in 97. It's a concert. So it's essentially a full Patsy Cline concert recording for the first time. And this is one of the top three. I would say you have to get this if you become a Patsy Cline fan. Sound quality can be rough. There's bleed through on the tape, but you really get the sense of her live performance and a lot of candid talking. And it's just fun. It's just an absolute blast. Okay, we're coming into the home stretch. Patsy Cline, country great. This is a truncated version of her debut album, Patsy Cline's Greatest Hits. This was the late 80s variant cover art version of the 1967 Greatest Hits album. And uh, the master tape, the master tape for this album reel is the only surviving master recording of Patsy Cline's. And it's, like I said, it's not even a studio tape. It's an, it's an album dub or an album reel. Everything else burned in the 2008 fire. That is what is commonly understood. Patsy Cline's The Last Sessions. This is an official release, and this is a compilation of the songs that she recorded in her last two or three studio sessions, representing the best songs, in my opinion, of her career. Here is the 1957 debut album on CD. This is pretty rare, harder to find, but it's, again, obviously an official release. These first, very first songs that she recorded dating back into the mid 50s. Here is Showcase with the second artwork, part of this compact classics series, compact price, compact disc, and uh, that's just the way they branded it. And you can see they all kind of match. Next up, we've got the commemorative collection. 
it's the 12 greatest hits album so this one and the last session so it's both of those two albums combined onto one one disc again do i need to have it both ways no but it's fun here's live volume one we saw live volume two earlier this doesn't say volume one on it so it causes some confusion but this is what they consider volume one it's all grand Ole opry live recordings some very interesting bits on here including some dialogue about her trip to carnegie hall and talking about that is really fun here is the Greatest Hits album again. This is the original 1967 artwork. This was before they switched to this. And there's even a, a more modern version of it that was just recently released. I'd like to pick that up. But um, yeah, those that's uh, kind of a, you know, if you have to start somewhere, why not start with the Greatest Hits? That was my second Patsy Cline record. It probably would have been my first if I hadn't stumbled across Showcase, which I thought was a Greatest Hits when I first found it, but it's not. And then finally, before we get to the grand finale here, Sentimentally Yours on CD. I just recently picked this up as well. This is part of the canon, as it were. The only album that they did not release on CD was That's How a Heartache Begins. Unfortunately, it's not on CD. I don't know why, but everything else is available. So this is the granddaddy of them all. This is the Patsy Cline collection. This is the only box set that they ever made. It's almost a complete collection of her recorded non-broadcast music. And um, I have two copies. I have one on CD, which is this one. It's a little bit cosmetically challenged on the outside, a little yellowed and worn. And I've got a cassette version and the box is pristine on that. This has all but like 10 or 11 of her studio recordings. It's got pretty much everything else. 1991 MCA issue in the long box. This is super cool. You'll see this all the time listed on eBay. Um, and people go, like, it's autographed. I got an autographed copy. Well, think about that. This is 91 and she passed away in 1963. And how is she going to autograph a CD release? You know what I mean? CD wasn't even invented yet. We'll look at that in a minute. First of all, this is where, and you can buy these anywhere from, you know, 12, 13, $14 best case scenario all the way up to, I wouldn't pay more than like 25, maybe 30 for a good condition one. And then you can own pretty much everything in one package. But this book, they call it a booklet, but this is legit a book that comes with it. And let me show you what I mean. This has not only a biography, which you would expect, but it's got pictures that you'll never see anywhere else. It's got a lot of anecdotal notes. And if we keep going to the back here, it's got a couple fold outs, sad news there, a picture of her in the parade here, it's like a mini poster. But if we keep heading to the back here, past the uh, bibliography, we've got a complete discography. And this is very useful if you're collecting records because it shows everything and every version and even has pictures of the different EPs. That looks like the debut album we looked at, but it's not, it's an EP. And it goes through here and has notes on the recordings. It tells you not only the date that these were recorded, but in some cases, even the time that the recording session happened. So what a fantastic resource for the Patsy Cline record collector. It shows the choral releases. It shows the DECA releases and just a fantastic reference guide. Absolutely. Then you've got the CDs. There's four discs conveniently labeled one, two, three, and four. And just pristine, you know, top of the line. As you can imagine, these are pretty basic, just a track listing because they have such a, you know, fancy liner note in the booklet itself, in the book. So yeah, these are just, it's, it's, a, it's a chronological step through her entire collection. I stumbled upon this initially because I bought these two discs loose early early on when I was collecting and I'm like one and two is that the whole thing I could tell they were out of a set and then I eventually learned what this was and what I was looking for and how to find it so yeah there you go my uh, incredibly robust Patsy Cline collection what have I missed if anything if you guys collect Patsy Cline what do you think what would you think about adding to this collection or you know what have you got in your collection okay so how do you win something for free so when I first learned about Patsy Cline, I knew of Patsy Cline very, very loosely. 
uh, years and years ago. I eventually started to listen to the music because of my interest in K-Star's music, and I found out about a K-Star from Glenn Miller, and as you know, I'm a huge Glenn Miller fan. So Glenn Miller had hired K-Star at one point to sing for a couple weeks with the band, recorded a couple of very good songs, and K-Star happened to have a fan in somebody by the name of Patsy Cline. So I thought I would listen to Patsy Cline's music, and as it turned out, I liked Patsy Cline's sound even more than I liked the sound of K-Star. So I started pursuing that. But that was after about a year prior, somewhere, and it, I believe it was documented on the channel. That's why I say there's a possibility here. I don't know 100% for sure, but I have a vague memory of documenting this on the channel, and I've gone back and cannot find it, so I need your help to find it. I'll let you know what you'll win if you do that. Um, but I had been going through a free bin or uh, maybe a thrift store. I'd been going through a place where you could pick up some artists that you weren't so familiar with that you want to give it a try. And I kept thinking it was the uh, the free bin at Second and Charles, but I just can't find the clip in any of the videos that I've searched through. But there's a lot out there now, so it could be there. And in those videos, um, I had this memory of finding this Patsy Cline showcase record, which is the first one I had ever discovered. And this was way before I started listening to her music. And I'm like, yeah, I think I've heard of her. I, I should pick this up. It's a famous person. One of these days we could review it on the channel. And uh, that kind of was the, the beginning of my record collecting. So it was interesting to uh, kind of pursue that and uh, you know learn about the artist and the music and all that good stuff. But here's the deal, if you can find that clip, send me a link to my own video or tell me specifically where it is. And the first person that can do that, I will be giving two free 45 adapters, including an exclusive color that is no longer available. So if you want two exclusive 45 adapters, be the first person to email me, recordology1938 at gmail.com with that link or information and you too can win. Well, my friends, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for everything. Again, if you're looking for Vlogmas stuff, it's over on my wife's channel, link down below. We'll see you next time.